How you doing everybody? I hope you're having a good day today. <clears throat> the subject today we're going to talk about are spiritual leaders. And so as we talk about this, we need to be reminded of what actually spiritual leaders are and what the Bible says about them. Because somehow people in the world have gotten different ideas about spiritual leaders. So um, the Bible does speak of certain people as being the spiritual leaders of a congregation. And of course, when we just follow the Bible, we read there in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus chapter 1, there are those who hold an office that is basically designed to be the spiritual leaders of the uh, congregation. And 1 Peter 5 tells us that these leaders should not be lording it over us, but by example, demonstrating what true Christianity is and leading the congregation of which they are an elder. So we see that uh, this office is sometimes referred to as elder. Sometimes it's called bishop. Sometimes it's called shepherd. Sometimes it's called pastor, and there's also a word called presbyter. Uh, and then, of course, uh, leader is also another word describing these individuals. Now, from a biblical sense, preachers are not spiritual leaders per se. They don't have an office. I mean, they're, they're, their duty is to preach the word of God. But yet, because they do preach the word of God, yes, they do lead people to Christ. They do lead people to be strong in the faith and to become teachers. And so, yes, they have a form of leadership, but it's not an official capacity or an official title from a biblical sense. And, of course, the, the denominational world has adopted this. Um, you know, a lot of times they call their preacher the pastor. In other words, he leads the flock, and that is the job of elders in the Bible. And so, and yes, elders also have that title pastor. So most times when someone calls some, um, hey, pastor so-and-so, uh, they're using it in a non-biblical way. All right. Sometimes preachers even allow themselves to be called pastor or demand that they be called pastor. Now, sometimes we have to understand that if people know that you're a preacher, they just may automatically say, how you doing today, pastor? I mean, that, I mean, that does happen. And so uh, if I have the opportunity, I will explain to them, well, technically I'm not a pastor. Uh, I, I'm not one of those elders. And so I do take the opportunity to try and teach when I have the opportunity, but somebody's just passing by, hi, pastor. <laughs> so I just let them go with it. But uh, if we get a chance, yeah, we should be telling people, you know, technically I'm not a pastor. So they should not be pastors as the denominational world knows them. And further, they certainly should not exercise evangelistic oversight. And I have heard of people who do that. They take control. In fact, there are some in some, part, some parts of the country, uh, they, they appoint one person to be the local elder and then the, the, the preacher who is on a circuit goes around and he technically is the other elder. And of course, that's not found in the scriptures. Uh, there's really no such thing as evangelistic oversight from the, the fact as being a spiritual leader. Overseeing is for elders, but the preachers uh, provide leadership in the learning, teaching of God's word and yes, they can be considered leaders. If they are leading people to Christ, if they're leading people to stronger faithfulness, yes, they can be considered a spiritual leader, but just there's no title to go along with that. Now, in another sense, every Christian, in a way, is a leader. I mean, we are to lead by example. You know, we're to let our light shine. Lead by example. And we do have a duty to lead others to Christ. I mean, that's what evangelism is. That's what personal evangelism is. We encourage others, and we set a good example for them. And we uh, set a good example for our fellow members and encourage them to do likewise. 
and of course uh, we, we, we try and teach by our example when we're dealing with those who are outside of Christ. And so in this sense, yes, um, when we show people the way of Christ and lead them to salvation through Christ, see, it's, it's really not appropriate to call all Christians spiritual leaders, but yes, that is one of their job functions. I mean, every Christian has a job to do. Every Christian has obligations and responsibilities to God, and one of those obligations is to try and teach others and lead by example. You know, in James 3, 1, uh, the scripture reads, Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we shall incur a stricter judgment. And then, of course, 1 Peter 4, 11 begins, If anyone speaks, let him speak as it were the oracles of God. In other words, the, the word of God are so important that uh, we must get them right. We have to make sure we teach them right. And so Paul told the Ephesian elders that he had preached to them the whole counsel of God. He didn't shrink from declaring anything that was profitable for them. So he told them what they needed to hear and what they needed as far as their, their guidance and, their, and the uh, direction he was pointing them. Of course, he spoke this as an, as an apostle. And so he had that authority to do so. But still, any other preacher should be willing to say that I have preached the whole counsel of God and I did not leave anything out that was profitable. So if anyone is presumed to teach others about God, they'd better be sure that they teach only what God has revealed in his word. When you start getting into the realm of personal uh, uh, think-sos and stuff like that, uh, you're going away from where, you, where you're supposed to be. And we know the gospel is God's power of salvation. And of course, the one who teaches it and lives by it uh, does, in, in fact, does take a lead, but like I say, without the title. Now, as we uh, know, not everyone respects the Bible as the word of God. And there are many who have made themselves teachers, but they are not qualified to teach because they do not teach the truth. Uh, you know, false teachers uh, are going to lead the faithful away. I mean, Second Peter 3.17 and Luke 6.39, that's what's going to happen. And preachers are the very ones who are to instruct and establish elders. I mean, that's what they're supposed to do. They're to instruct elders on what elders need to do. And so, uh, and like I said, the elders don't need to lord it over. In other words, it's my way or the highway. They don't need to be doing that either. And of course, a preacher's job is to identify and uh, encourage brethren to become elders. See, in Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 1 through 10, God dealt with some false teachers. And of course, uh, he, he, he uh, called them the false shepherds. And these false shepherds had the responsibility to teach the truth of God's message but they failed in teaching it. And it also seemed that they seemed to profit at the expense of the truth. You know, we, we, we hear every now and then about, about these uh, denominational preachers making thousands, if not millions of dollars, even though they're not teaching the truth, but they're teaching something that people want to hear. And so this paints a picture of many in the denominational world, and sadly, even some in the church follow this pattern. And that, that is real sad. But remember that God said, Woe, shepherds of Israel who have been feeding themselves, should not the shepherds feed the flock? That's Ezekiel 34 and verse 2. And later on in that chapter, we find that God will seek out his sheep and provide them with a true shepherd. And of course, yes, this is a prophetic utterance concerning the Christ. And we know that. Now, Christ, uh, being a shepherd... He called his followers sheep. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. John 10, 27. And back in verse 4, he says, when he puts forth all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. See, sheep was speak Jesus was speaking in terms of the people could understand 
and it was obvious that the sheep only followed their master's voice and no one else. You know, years ago I heard of a, a man who was uh, over there in the Palestine area, and uh, there was one watering hole that four or five, six different herds of goats or sheep came in to get water, and they were all mixed up. And well, how, how, how do they know where to go, when to go? Said, so just watch. And so as each shepherd decided to go back his separate way, he would holler out something and his sheep and only his sheep would follow him. His goats and only his goats would follow him. So yes, that, that's what Jesus was talking about, that uh, we follow him. All right. Uh, Jesus was teaching that he was that master and he was that shepherd. Everyone should hear and follow is what Jesus had to say. And God warned the people to only follow the teaching of the true prophet of God. Yet time and time again, the people decided to follow those prophets who told them what they wanted to hear. You know, 2 Timothy 4, 3, For, all, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wishing to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers of their own desires. And those teachers who give the people what they want are false teachers and prophets, and God is certainly not pleased with them. See, only those who preach the Bible as their source of authority are the ones who are qualified to be called the true teachers and then, of course, true spiritual leaders. So keep these things in mind. Um, we read some, some versions talk about spiritual leaders, including men and women. And technically, that's not correct. But uh, in a sense of, yes, we're all evangelists, we're all teachers, we're all to lead people to Christ. Yes, we're leaders. Every Christian has that designation and responsibility to lead others to Christ. And so in that sense, yes, we can call spiritual leaders. But as far as official spiritual leaders, that is limited to the elders and the deacons. And, uh, of course, uh, the teachers as well. So consider these thoughts, uh, just some things uh, interesting that I came across. So uh, consider those things. All right, uh, we're going to end the lesson for today. Uh, Y'all have a, a good day, a blessed day. Enjoy your day and uh, enjoy your weekend that's coming up. All right, and uh, hopefully, Lord willing, we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.